Welcome to Advertisers Watching Ads. My name is Tom Ollerton. I'm the founder of Automated Creative. And this is a weekly show where brands watch other brands' ads and have a discussion about them to decide who wins out of the week. And this week is pretty special. It's a TikTok special. We're going to be discussing work from Beats by Dre, Bugles, and the Uffizi Gallery. And this show is brought to you in partnership with the Conscious Advertising Network. So please go and check those guys out. So let's meet this week's guests. Hi, I'm Arjun Bose. I am um, Head of Culture and Experience at General Mills for Europe, Australasia. Hi, I'm Sunny. I'm the Social and Content Planning Lead at Pernod Ricard UK. Hello, my name is Richard Norton, co-founder of Bristol Creative Technologist, Tiny Giant. Fantastic, guys. Thanks so much for joining. Right. So first up, Nort, we have your advert. Can you give the audience a bit of context around this ad? But what I put on the table is basically some content from the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. Nails, hair, hips, heels, ass, fat, lips, real, purse, full, big bills, bitch, I'm a big deal. Legs, legs, face, eyes, thin, waist, thick, thighs, you, me, you, wish, new phone, who, this, pussy, puss, puss, give him cunt, 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 bitch, mama, yes, dog, then you pop that tongue, bitch, this whole club is my runway, run, bitch, y'all, five, four, three, twos, I'm a one, bitch. Girl, what did that girl just say, girl? <laughs> So, Richard, why did you share that ad with us? Coming from the sort of place where my own business comes from, the idea of trying to get people to do something pioneering, to do things that are unexpected. To me, what I love about it is the fact that, you know, there's this what, what would possibly be a crusty, fusty, dusty art gallery, albeit with all this amazing art, and they've come into this social media arena where some might think, well, what are they doing there? Why are they in that? And they've taken all the kind of uh, qualities of what TikTok can offer in terms of obviously the music and the way you can edit it. And in effect, they've taken all those great pieces of art and they've turned them into kind of little micro stories that kind of feel very resonant and very modern today. So, Sonny, what was your take on that? Did you think that it was just right to, as Richard says, attract a younger audience or they being disrespectful. I feel like it's such a nice blend of old and new. And when you look at like who they're trying to attract, you know, the, the younger Gen Zers, like this is exactly the way they consume content. And I think it's, uh, I think it's brilliant. Yeah, I love it. How about you, Arjun? Do you do you think this is a, a large sprawling marketing organization or do you think some Gen Z has got their hands on the, uh, on the TikTok account, run around the gallery and just done it and asked for permission afterwards? Probably the latter, Tom. <clears throat> but I, I think I have to say, you know what? It makes you smile. And I think what's, what's interesting is, is that it's so unexpected. Clearly they've given the keys of their account to some hyper creative young Gen Zer who understands TikTok. Um, I guess my question here will be, what is the objective? Is it going to make me w more interested in Renaissance art? Is it going to make me think about, you know, those artists from the time of Michelangelo, Raphael, and my going to suddenly develop a deep interest in it? Is it going to make me want to come to Florence and check out the Uffizi Gallery? I don't know. Oh, I think they've done a Banksy on their own art. They've sort of yeah. abused it. And, yeah, they have. Uh, and I think they know they've done that and they're cool with it. Arjun, you are next. Can you please give us some context around your TikTok? Sure. Uh, so, so this TikTok is Beats by Dr. Dre's debut on TikTok. It's their first ever campaign. And for that, they, uh, they jumped into TikTok for the first time um, using the creation, you know, building on the creation of a new music video by, by the singer called Ashniko. And that really plays up the Beats Daisy challenge. And it's a very recent campaign. It goes li It went live on Saturday, 11th of July. And what's nice about it is that it invites the TikTok community's participation over a four week period that's tied into separate challenges that essentially ties into the launch of four different colors of Beats's new, I think it's called 
Power Beats Pro headphones. So there's a blue, there's a yellow, there's a pink, and a red. I'm teaming up with Beats to make a kick-ass, colorful video for my new song, Daisy. It's gonna feature all the new beautiful Power Beats Pro summer colors, as well as some of your pretty faces. So if you wanna be in my video, check out the challenge and be sure to show me your true colors. So Arjun, tell us why you chose that video. So for me, it's really pushing the limits of traditional marketing uh, and creating a, a campaign that has impact. Um, it's, it's clearly, you know, it's, it's, it's phased because it's using these separate challenges and it's, and it's using, I, I believe, what is two of their most sort of premium offerings. One is the hashtag challenge, which allows brands to directly engage the TikTok community and tap UGC, as well as what is called Top View, which is a, I think it's, it's a full screen 60 second immersive ad that appears as soon as a user opens the application. So you're, you can't miss it. So it's, it's almost unmissable. So Sunny, how does that land with you for some of the brands you represent? It's a clear visual language and beats have that, that shine and that bounce in the actual product and you see that reflected in the creative itself. And then when they could dig into all of the colors, um, it's hard to do both. Like a lot of brands associate with color, but it, it's like, what is it color literally or color, color metaphorically? And they've actually done both in a really cool way. Richard, do you, do you think there's a lot of creative skill here? Do you think that they've got a famous face and bought a, essentially a TikTok tick takeover? Have they made it pretty much impossible for anyone to ignore this? And to be honest, in my forays in TikTok in the last two or three weeks, or certainly, no, it's probably the last week, all I've ever seen on my first time I turn it on is that advert, to be honest to the point of, of almost insanity of seeing Ash Nico's face. So I went and had a look at the, some of the content that was being created because like Arjun said, it's like a four week challenge. And so the old Sturgeon's Law kicks in, doesn't it? Where 90% of everything is crap. So you go to the, all the people who've done the, who have done all the uh, content and wants to get in the video. To be honest, the entertainment there, it's kind of great for Beats That Association because you just find yourself scrolling along. You're looking for the brilliant, but you're also looking for the spaff as well. But is there a massive, massive idea to it? I don't think so, but the, the elements are there because they're the first to sort of take the power of TikTok and turn it into something with a music artist. So finally, Sonny, we have your ad, your TikTok, I apologize. Do you want to tell us a bit about this? Um, yeah, so it's not an ad. Uh, well, it's a piece of content or I guess uh, a, a brand channel that I think there's sort of no um, bells and whistles from a strategic uh, consumer journey planning point of view. It's just uh, a good content feed that's in line with the platform, um, which is Bugles, uh, the Bugles TikTok channel. Um, and just looking at a few pieces of content over the last uh, kind of quarter. <laughs> Sonny, tell us what we're, what we're seeing there to help us understand a bit more about these, these crazy card makers. Okay, so one of the things that it's good context to know is that they're cone-shaped crisps, but as you can see, uh, you can put them in places. And like people from growing up, we used to put them on our fingertips and that was like the thing to do. And they, I think, like most, you know, from a from a crisp point of view you're a crisp co company like you know you have your crisp in a bowl and that's how you shoot it and it's on a table and it's a flat lay and all of that but like they're actually not just in this what i'm showing you now but like as a brand they kind of said oh we noticed that people are putting on their fingers and then just like dive into that and start creating content off the back of that so they're really like it's super playful and um with these two in particular it's like i said it's not it's it's uh I mean, I know how it is like when a new platform launches and as a brand, it's like, what kind of ROI are there going to be? What about brand safety? Um, you know, you have these sort of myriad of like uh, things that you kind of evaluate until you launch. But 
I feel like they just kind of jumped in and were like, let's do this and let's like really understand what's happening on the platform. And it's lo-fi, like there's no production value whatsoever. Um, and for me, that shows a brand who really understands how the Gen Z are kind of reinventing the web. Just on the croc one, like- um, Hey, look, I'm, I'm prepared. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> but there's a, we'll come to that. <laughs> it's like it's classic uh content planning right like what's happening in the cultural dialogue and how do we as a brand have something to say about it and like crocs are like one of the biggest drivers of conversation in tiktok like um they had they they do a ton of stuff like around challenges and you, the fact that they've posted that with uh how do you like have fun with um geeking out your a pair of crocs with bugles i think it's just really smart and clever and like tapping into uh like a cultural mo cultural moment <laughs> so arjun do you agree with sunny that this is gen z reinventing the web or are we just seeing what we saw on snapchat about five six seven years ago and then kind of before that uh twitter to a degree i'll try to be as unbiased as i can here but what I will say, and what I what I do like about what they've done is, um, they've they've focused on the on the unpolished, relatable type type of content that we know Gen Z love. Is it is it the most outstanding TikTok content that you'll find in the web? You one can argue and say probably not. Um, is it doing a great job in keeping brand relevancy with with that audience and and sort of staying true to its core? playful nature i would say yes so guys unfortunately we are at the end of the episode which leaves us in the tantalizing position of having to decide which is out of the week can i have a hands up for the Uffizi gallery well i'm gonna i'm gonna go yeah no. right and um, well that's it guys thank you so much <laughs> thanks for joining uh, check out the conscious advertising network if you have a chance and we will see you next week on advertisers watching ads